sky, we make adjustments on devotional because I didn't want this ever to become <clears throat> so professional that it looked like some kind of religious broadcasting system. <laughs> or that <clears throat> it would be anything more than just simply one person sharing with another person the reality of Jesus and the reality of knowing that you can hear God speak and that he wants to speak to you as well as to me. And then also, as I mentioned from the very beginning of devotional, that I wanted someone to help me to read my devotionals that I used to read every day on a consistent basis so that if I shared it with someone in emotional in a video way that that would help me to continue on reading them because sometimes you find that you need a little help from your friends and sometimes it's just a matter of taking what you want and giving it to someone else so that you get what you wanted but you're giving what you desired for yourself and that may be a reverse selfish kind of sort of way but in some ways it's denying yourself and giving to someone else what you would have for yourself. <laughs> that makes sense? But in doing that the porch has a challenge for this little camera that I have that I could probably go out I guess and buy one that would work better but or work on the software but like most techies or most people, you just use what you got. You know, God knows. I mean, <laughs> he, uses the way he, he uses you the way you are. And he cleans up your act slowly but surely. But as you are, the way you are is how God uses you. So what I have, I use. And what I don't have, I don't worry about. So such as it is, this is the way that we are truthful meaning that we're, this is who I am, this is who you are, this is the way it is. There's no false stage or some made-up idea or some agenda that I look ahead and read about and plan out what God is going to say and then say it according to, wow, you know, I've got this outline, I'm going to follow it. Phooey! Jesus said when they bring you up before magistrates and they bring you before the elders and the whoever, don't worry about what you're going to say ahead of time. Your Father in Heaven knows what you need to say, so He'll give you those words at the time that you need to speak them. You know, and it, <laughs> it may not be the church way, and it may not be some of uh, fundamentalist Christians' way, but you know, it's my way. <laughs> That's the way God has used me. When I go give a talk at a church, I may have a general idea of what I might say, but and unless somebody says, you know, stop, I, I could go all night, you know. <laughs> and, and the one time I gave my testimony, it was three hours. It was, I think, two hours long, some three hours long, maybe. I don't know. But I know they didn't want me to stop, so we kept going. Praise the Lord. It was fun. I loved it. But in Streams in the Desert, as we're sharing devotionals in this new setting, a different angle on my porch, you know, we're seeking God to speak because there's always an empty chair here and God is always invited so at any moment if I suddenly go goodbye <laughs> it's because Jesus showed up and I'd rather talk to him than you <laughs> and I'd rather hear what he says you know than hear what God may be speaking in me to you through my mouth because sometimes that might get a little confusing to you and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank you that you have heard me. John 11, 41. This is a very strange and unusual order. Lazarus is still in the grave, and the thanksgiving precedes, or comes before, the miracle of resurrection. I thought that the thanksgiving would have risen when the great deed had already been done, and Lazarus was restored to life again. But Jesus gives thanks for what he is about to receive. The gratitude breaks forth before the bounty has arrived. In the song sung before the battle has been fought, it is the sower who is singing the song of the harvest home. It is thanksgiving before the miracle. Who thinks of announcing a victory song when the crusaders are just starting out for the field? Where can we hear the grateful song for the answer which has not yet been received? And after all, there is nothing strange or forced or unreasonable to the master's order. 
praise is really the most vital preparatory ministry to the working of miracles. Miracles are wrought by spiritual power, and spiritual power is always proportioned to our faith. I might debate that one. <laughs> nothing so pleases God in connection with our prayer and our praise, and nothing so pleases the man who prays as the praise which he offers. Think about that. Nothing so pleases God in connection with our prayer and, and our praise, and nothing so blesses the man who prays as the praise which he offers. I got a great blessing once in China in this connection. I had received bad and sad news from home, and deep shadows had covered my soul. I prayed, but the darkness did not vanish. I summoned myself to endure, but the darkness only deepened. Just then I went to an island, an inland station and saw on the wall of the mission home these words, Try Thanksgiving. I did, and in a moment every shadow was gone, not to return. Yes, the psalmist was right. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. You know, one of the things I mention at different times is why I pick these devotionals or why I read these and have read these since I first got saved. And one of the things about Streams in the Desert is that because it's a collection at that time of a missionary that was in China that her husband was dying and so she collected all these devotionals and she would read to him and that she would encourage herself by reading to her husband as he slowly passed away over the years that I am struck by several things is that one is a lot of times we don't realize that the world was evangelized the world has been taught about Jesus there are places that we say no man has ever gone but God has gone there I'm sorry you may not agree with me on this one, but in Romans, you know, we know that every man has known God at some point in time, and he's changed the image of the corruptible God into the image, into the, the incorruptible God into the image of the corruptible man, and that they've changed what God has said and placed in their heart and developed within their soul, and has some point in time interceded and intervened in their life to cause them to know in the same way that Abraham was caused to know by God that there was the living God and he chose to go with God in a direction that he would eventually become Abraham as opposed to Abram. Every man has had that same experience, not quite to the same results, and maybe not in the same intimate, personal way, in the same way, but that's for God to determine. But God has promised that that's what happens. So when I read Streets in the Desert, often the missionaries tell about where they were at like we just read in china do you know china was very christian at one time it the christian missionaries had great revivals in china you see the reason why i say this right now is because in my day china's treated as the big bad wolf you know and oh how evil and how corrupt but have you ever heard of a person called pearl s buck she was a missionary to china you see China wasn't always the way it is today. The same is true about Germany. You know, people think of Germany as, oh my gosh, Hitler and, you know, evil and corrupt and uh, ick. And once in a while they think of Bonhoeffer and they remember the cost of discipleship. But Germany was the center at one time of Christianity. Whoa, 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 whoa. Germany? You ever heard of the Gutenberg Bible? You know, and then you think about, like, other places like Italy, Rome. Yes, Rome was the center of Christianity at one time. It wasn't evil as people try to make it all out to be. It was right at one time. Shock of shocks. And France. Did France have a great revival at one time? Did Russia have Christians? Did Japan actually have Christianity as a big revival? Has Africa? has the Middle East, has Israel. Mm -hmm. God has gone throughout the world. So if you ever get to the point where you think that you're the center of the universe, being in this country, just remember, in the same way that every other country has had great revivals and fallen great depths to despair, we ought to consider where we are, how we are, the way we are, so that we would not be lifted up and prideful, but we would be mindful of our personal relationship with God because our country may fall apart. Our country may go a opposite way than God has determined for it. But those that are alive and living in that country endure to the end 
and they are found faithful to their friend who is Jesus. So God hears you when you call. Thank him for that. And thank him for the country you live in. But thank him also for the fact that he goes out into the world. And maybe, I hope it's true for you, because it was for me when I was a missionary, I hope God sends you on a mission, whether short-term, long-term, lifetime or not, that God would send you and direct you to go out from your comfort zone so that you could see that there's a bigger picture in the world than just the little world that we inhabit right now today. Because God is speaking and he is sending people out daily to share some good news. It's not all about the bad news in the world. Believe it or not, there's some good news to be had. And that is that their salvation is being accomplished daily. God is working to his uttermost to save to the utmost. Thank you.